What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're calling we're going to be talking about what I'm calling the EV chess match of 2025. We've got three interesting stories. The EV industry is just getting interesting in general. It's no longer about who can build the fastest car or who has the best technology. Now, before we jump in, you guys know I'm long Neo. I've been pretty transparent on this since the inception of this YouTube channel. But what excites me today isn't just Neo's progress, it's how innovation is happening at breakneck speeds and how everyone is collectively forcing innovation out of each other. Let's start with Lee Otto's i8 launch, and this is pretty interesting from a business perspective. While everyone's talking about the car itself, the real story is happening behind the scenes in the supply chain. Lee Otto just pulled off something pretty remarkable with their silicone carbide modules through SCO Semiconductor, a joint venture with Hunan Sanan where they hold 70%. Now here's why this matters, they've redesigned the entire module architecture with what they call wind window areas, essentially shorter electrical pathways that reduce energy loss by 1% beyond the standard 6% improvement silicon carbide already provide. Think about that for a second. On a 100 kilowatt hour battery, that's 47 additional kilometers of range just from uh, smarter engineering. But here's the kicker. Most companies won't attempt this design because as SCO's general manager put it, Different materials in the window area create stress under high pressure and temperature conditions. So basically, it's risky, unproven technology. This tells me that Lee Auto's taking risk on integration and making bets that their competitors won't. They're literally redesigning fundamental technology while competitors are holding um, conferences or what they call war rooms trying to figure out a solution to uh, these types of problems. That's not just dedication. It's desperation to differentiate in a highly competitive commoditized market. The 5C charging with CATL, that's another chess move. They achieved 10 minutes for 500 kilometers worth of range, but the real innovation was the conformal battery pack design that saves them five millimeters of chassis height. In the premium SUV space, every millimeter of interior space matters. Now let's talk about Tesla's strategy, and here's where things become uncomfortable for Tesla uh, bulls. They leaked the Model Y Youth Edition, and it's basically Tesla saying that they're not really competing on innovation at this point in time they're competing on price. So what did they cut with this variant? Well, everything. Split headlights became integrated, through light strips disappeared, panoramic glass roof gone, replaced with basic hard plastic, fabric seats instead of synthetic leather, no rear entertainment screens, no ambient lighting, even the A-pillar tweeters are removed. But here's what's interesting, they kept the hardware for for full self-driving. This tells me Tesla's betting everything on software differentiation while commoditizing the hardware experience. From a market strategy perspective, this makes sense. Tesla's gross margins dropped and they need volume, but it also signals something deeper. Tesla's acknowledging that they can't win the premium game against Chinese automakers who are out innovating them on manufacturing and supply chain. The question becomes, can Tesla's software moat justify increasingly less competitive hardware? Because let's be honest, removing the panoramic sunroof from a Tesla is like removing the Apple logo from an iPhone. You're fundamentally changing the brand promise. And this brings me to Neo, where my optimism isn't just based on bias today, it's based on execution. The Firefly brand hitting 10,000 deliveries in just three months is pretty significant, but not for the reasons that you'd think. First, let's talk about the numbers. 231 units in April's last two days, then 3,680 in May, then 3,932 in June, and 2,157 so far in July. That's consistent month over month growth and a completely new segment for Neo. But here's the strategic brilliance. Neo originally planned to launch Firefly in Europe first, but tariffs ultimately forced them to pivot to China. Instead of seeing this as a setback, they've used it as a testing ground. They're now preparing for European deliveries with real market validation and operational learning. Even the battery as a service launch in June dropping the entry price from 79,800 rent with a 399 rent monthly battery fee shows that Neo's understanding that different markets need different value propositions. 
They're not just selling cars, they're selling mobility solution. William Lee confirming that European deliveries will begin soon with plans for 20 overseas markets by year end tells me that Neo's playing a different game entirely. While Lee Auto fights supply chain battles and Tesla cuts costs, Neo's building a global ecosystem. So what does this all mean? We're watching three completely different strategies play out in real time. Lee Auto is betting on engineering experience and innovation. They're trying to out-engineer the competition with silicone carbide modules, LiDAR, and 5C charging. It's risky, it's expensive, but potentially game-changing. Tesla's betting on software differentiation while commoditizing hardware. They're essentially saying our cars might be more basic, but our AI will be superior. It's a dangerous game that could backfire if competitors obviously catch up on software. Neo's betting on ecosystem service and differentiation. Firefly's success isn't just about the car, it's about battery swapping, it's about battery as a service and global expansion. They're building infrastructure while competitors build product. Here's my take. In 2025, the EV market isn't about who builds the best cars anymore. It's about who builds the best business model. Lee Auto's engineering might win them premium customers. Tesla cutting costs might win them volume. But Neo's eco system approach that might win them the future the supply chain innovations that we're seeing from Lee Auto uh, the cost pressures forcing Tesla's hand and the global expansion strategy that we're seeing unravel at Neo these aren't separate stories they're three responses to the same reality the EV market is maturing and only companies with differentiated products and strategy will win that's a wrap on today's episode whether you're bullish on engineering innovation software differentiation or ecosystem plays the next 12 months are going to be fascinating to watch all right everyone that's it for this one i'm obi with courtside financial in the market just as in a basketball game winning isn't necessarily about who has the flashiest moves it's about executing when strategy matters most We'll see you in the next one. If this was useful, helpful, at the very least entertaining, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. As you guys can tell, I'm a little sick and a little under the weather, but I had to get this video out for you guys today. So appreciate you sticking with me and watching. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.